Hey guys, welcome to today's top tips video and today we're talking about how you can build a successful commercial covers band. So as a musician, being in a covers band is a great way to support yourself and stop yourself having to go and get a J-O-B. Nobody wants one of those. And this is a really, really good way, whether you're at college or just finished college, this is a great way to support yourself whilst you build and develop your career as a musician. But what's the best way to do it? Because I get a lot of musicians come through to me asking me how to build a successful band that is out not just once a week, but multiple times a week. So let's get started. Point 10, plan the detail before you start the band. Far too many musicians will get their mates involved, put a band together, start putting songs into the set, and then come through and ask, what is the next thing to do? And by that point, it's a little bit too late. So before you start, you need to know exactly what this band is gonna stand for, what it's gonna do, and what you are working towards. Point nine. Have a niche and steer clear of the middle. Now, when it comes to covers bands, there is so much noise and there are so many musicians in covers bands trying to get gigs and they're all doing exactly the same thing. And it is fucking boring. If you want to be in a commercial band that's gonna actually make sense and get a lot of gigs, you need to steer clear of what everyone else is doing because there are far, far too many musicians in far, far too many covers bands not getting enough work. And this isn't about you getting the odd gig. This is about you sustaining a career and therefore you're gonna need to get one or two gigs every single week. So the first rule is have a niche. Rather than just saying, yeah, we're gonna do Uptown Funk and we're gonna do Mr. Brightside and we're gonna do Sex on Fire and we're gonna do Justin Timberlake. That's all very well, that's all fantastic. However, everybody is doing that. So you need a bit more of a niche. Now, if you have a niche like say, I don't know, 90s, 90s girl band and boy band, or something a bit different. Or if you have something like that Kerrang era from 2001 to 2000, 2010, those are really good eras that you can start to have a bit more of a niche and start to market your band towards people who are having parties, getting married, corporate, sort of corporate parties, who are actually into that kind of music. So think of your niche. Think of where you sit when it comes to all of the rest of the covers bands in the country and a couple of songs that you can start to market. Now, what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna have all of the songs in one genre, just 90s boy bands, I get that. But this is about marketing and how you can do something that is a little bit different and have sections in your set which is not just the same old, same old. Shall we play Superstition? Fuck no! I am bored of hearing 18 to 21 year old white kids playing Superstition. Do something more relevant. Point eight, be real. So firstly, this idea of a functions band. Fuck functions band. You are in a band. You are a musician. Take pride in what you do. This idea of being a functions band. I hate that word functions band. I want you to be in a band because when you go out and play, you take pride in your music. You take pride in your instrument. You take pride in your technique. So therefore, take pride in what you do because everyone else does. Nobody wants a functions band. They want a band. What they actually want is they want Pharrell or they want Justin Timberlake or they want Bruno Mars or they want Lady Gaga or they want the stereophonics. However, they can't have that, so they want the next best thing and that's what you've got to be. So turn up in some kind of ill-fitted suit or tuxedo and just regurgitating the same old shit is not good enough. This is real. How can you get your band to look, feel and sound as real as possible so people who are 25 to 55 years old are actually booking a real band? Point seven, your price point. How much are you gonna charge? Now, if you look at around the country at the bands and agencies that are putting hundreds and hundreds of these bands out a week, the, the, the traditional average price in the UK tends to be around about a thousand pounds. So therefore, that's the noisiest area. That's what everyone's competing for. So if you are gonna go down that route of, of charging a thousand pounds, be prepared to have a big fight amongst everybody else and have a think about where you sit. And this goes back to the first point, which is, Plan the band before you start getting people involved because if you've got seven people involved in this band and there's two guitarists and two singers and a keyboard player and then you say, we're gonna undercut other people, then you're gonna really struggle and everyone's gonna be taking next to no money. And this price point is really important because if you are at college, if you are 19, 20, 21 years old and you've done a couple of gigs, a couple of covers gigs that people have thrown your way, 
then realize that there are people going out for that thousand pound mark in a band that have been doing this for 15 years. These guys are immensely experienced. So know your place and don't just go, oh, what do they charge? They charge a thousand pounds. Well, we'll charge a thousand pounds. Actually think about how much you're gonna charge and what the client is gonna get for that thousand pounds. And there's nothing to be said for why don't you charge 3,000 pounds, but then give people value for money. Make sure you've got a choir or make sure you've got a full brass section and a female singer and a male singer and a keyboard player or two keyboard players. And make sure it sounds like Bruno Mars's band or Justin Timberlake's band. Make it worth the money, but you don't have to just sit in that noisy middle lane thousand pounds. Point six. Keep your costs down. Now, once you've decided how much you are gonna charge for the band, outside of that, there are extra costs because you've gotta travel, you've gotta get there, you've gotta get your gear there. You might have to stay over if it's, if it's over a certain distance. And so you need to keep your costs down. Now, if you look at how many people are in the band, after a three piece, if you add an extra member, there's more costs. If you add a five piece, a six piece, a seven piece, these are more costs. If you're traveling with six people, you need more cars. It's just simple maths. If you are traveling with more cars, you are gonna to have to charge more in the way of petrol. So when it comes to musicians union, everyone should get paid this and everyone should get paid that for petrol and everyone should charge that for, for every hour that you're there before five o'clock or every hour that you're there after 12 o'clock. Just be sensible with this stuff because what you should get and what you will get are two different things. Now, once you've been doing this for 10 years and you've got so many gigs that you are literally having to turn them down. Do what you want, but this is the start. How do you build a successful covers band? And the first thing is you don't char start charging the world for loads and loads of extras. You just say, this is what the band costs, and then we're going to try and do our best to keep the other costs around that as low as possible to make this a realistic fee for your band to go out and get 50 to 100 gigs to sustain your career. Point five, marketing. You need to recognize where we are at in the state of play with commercial bands in the UK at the moment. The standard is very, very high and it is constantly improving and evolving. So you need to have a think about what you are gonna do in the way of photos. You are gonna need a good photo shoot, probably a professional photo shoot, and that might cost 100, 150 quid. You are gonna need a performance video, which again might cost you a couple hundred pounds, but it is the state of play. People want to see that stuff now and it has to go past just on a gig, some iPhone footage. It needs to be better because that's the standard standard of where we are at at the moment. And you are gonna to need to go in the studio and you are gonna to need to record some really good demos. And what songs you choose, going back to the, to the um, evolution of your band and where you are putting it in the market are up to you. But the standard now is high. So go and do your research, go and have a look at some agents, go and have a look at some of these covers bands and see what the standard is like that you have to replicate. Point four, social media is still key. This is a band and this is fun and you are gonna make money from this, but this is still a business and you need to take this seriously. And social media doesn't just build up your brand, but it builds up your social proofing. It allows people to see that you are gigging and therefore that builds trust that you know what you're doing. It allows people to try before they buy, more so than just going and seeing pre-made videos, pre-made demos, and pre-made pictures. Your social media is the real side to it, saying this is what we do, this is what we stand for, but then here's us on a gig, here's us wowing crowds. So think of this as a business. Now, when it comes to your social media, the main way that people are gonna find you, or the main people that pe way people are gonna wanna see you is still gonna be Facebook. So so make sure on every single gig that you do, you are getting pictures, videos, anything that you can do to show off pictures of the crowd, pictures of you with a bride, anything that shows you off as a busy working band. You have to remember this is a business more so than a band. Point three, never stop evolving. Never stop evolving your set list and the songs that you do. And the reason for that is because Everybody is trying to get on this market. And if they are, then it's a big competition. And it's very, very easy and it's very, very quick for a band to become out of date. Because nowadays, functions is a crappy word, but 
covers is not. Covers is not a dirty word anymore. And there's so many massive bands in the world that do covers and nobody minds. Whether it's Boyce Avenue or whether it's Tyler Ward or whether it's postmodern jukebox, covers is now a normal thing because of YouTube. But the way they do it is they're playing modern tracks. So if you're still playing songs from five years ago, like if you're playing Call Me Maybe in your set and you think that's modern, then think again because it absolutely isn't and when Ed Sheeran released his brand new album a couple of months back if you're in a commercial band you need to jump on that instantly because people want to hear that people are used to watching X Factor or Britain's Got Talent and these songs are everywhere they're on the radio it's very different to where it was 20 years ago and people's mums and granddads are hearing these songs all over the place on TV and radio so when a new song comes out and blows up it has to be in your set you've got to keep your set evolving at all times Point two, look after the agents because the agents are what get you the gigs. Now, agencies will have 500, 600 bands on the books. You can imagine how much stuff is sent through to these agents. So your job is to make their life as easy as possible. When it comes to getting a gig, when they ring you and say, can you do a gig? Your job is to make things as easy as possible. So you say, yes, we can do the gig. And if they say, but can you add this extra in? You say, yeah, of course we can do that. If they say, can you get us some new marketing? You say, absolutely. Your job is to be as relevant as possible to that agent and stay in their head. Because when someone phones up and says, I'm looking for a band for my party, then you want them to think about you. And the reason is, is because with your song choice or your marketing, your video, you want the agent to say, oh, I have to show you this band. They came through today. It is so cool. It's so much fun. If you aren't looking after the agents, they will forget about you very, very quickly. And agencies is not the only way you can get gig, but it is a great way for you to get gigs. And they they do spend a lot of money, time and effort on getting up the top levels on SEO and Google and advertising. So they get a lot of gigs come through. So if you want to get the gigs and you want to get in on agents, then look after them. They're your friends. Point number one and the biggest point of them all. Yes. You say yes to everything. You say yes if you have to travel too far and you don't want to. You say yes if the money's too low and you don't want it. You say yes if they ask you to do a bunch of songs that you didn't really want in the first place. To start with, I'm not talking about a year or two years down the line, but this is simple supply and demand. This is economics. This is about you getting your foot on the ladder. So to start with, you have to go out of your way to say yes at all times. And then what happens is over a period of time, more people come to rely on you. Oh, it's that band or it's that guy from the band. He's so much easier to deal with. And the yeses will get build up and build up and you'll get more and more and more gigs until you get enough gigs to say, okay, from here on in, we're not going to do those gigs or we're not going to do it for that price or we probably need to charge proper petrol money or we're not going to do those songs. We're only going to do these songs. But at least you've built up that reputation. So I cannot tell you when it comes to this stuff, when it comes to agencies, covers, bands, getting gigs, the word, the biggest word is yes and worry about the detail afterwards. And when someone says, ah, oh, but I really need you, you just say, mate, let, let's sort it out. If they say, but I need you to play for two and a half hours or three hours, you just say, fine, we'll sort that out. Oh, but there's a limiter. Fine, we'll sort it out. Yes, 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 yes. That is the key word for you getting 70 to 100 gigs a year. And I see far too many bands putting stipulations on. Yeah, but if you want us to arrive an extra hour early, we have to make more money. Yeah, fine in five years time, but to start with, let's leave all that shit and let's just think, let's get out and do as many gigs as we can so everybody wants us. And then when people want us, then we can become a bit more picky and a bit more choosy. So that's the top 10 tips to building a successful commercial band. Thanks for watching. I would love it if you'd subscribe to the YouTube. That's what I do this for. I don't need payment. I just need you to subscribe to my YouTube so I can watch the little numbers go up and it makes me feel good about myself. <sighs> um, anything you need, hit me up. Otherwise, I'll see you guys tomorrow.